be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our worship this service is begin on the page 119 on the Green Prayer Book. And it's a warm welcome to you all as we gather here today one more week as a living people and to all those who are joining us online. Let us come and worship God with our whole hearted, trusting in his promise and knowing that he's the God who always have mercy on us. Christ is risen, alleluia. Turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Let us pray together. Almighty God, Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins and penitence and faith with a sincere and true heart. Merciful God. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray the collect. Lord of life, by submitting to death,
reading from the Acts of the Apostles. <coughs> Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed... We will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins, no one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. 
for the word of the Lord. Let us turn to sing hymn number six, 266. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. While the eleven and the companions were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and my feet. See what it is in myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he shown them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of a boiled fish and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms might be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, that it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. For the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
In today's Gospel reading, we witness a profound encounter between Jesus and his disciples. As they gathered in fear and doubt, Jesus appeared among them, offering peace and reassurance. Yet, even in his presence, doubt lingered in their hearts. Doubt is a natural part of the human experience. We all face moments of uncertainty, questioning, and skepticism. However, what matters is how we respond to doubt. Do we allow it to take root and overshadow our faith? Or do we use it as an opportunity to deepen our trust in God? Jesus understood the disciples' doubts and he patiently addressed them, inviting them to see and touch his wounds as profound of his resurrection. He did condemn them for their disbelief, but instead offered them the evidence they needed to believe. Doubt is a formidable adversary. It threatens to choke the seeds of faith preventing them from taking root and growing. In our lives, doubt can either harden or strengthen our relationship with God. When doubt takes place, hold of our heart. It acts as barren, preventing the seeds of faith from taking root and growing. Like soil contaminated with weed, <coughs> doubt perspires the growth of belief. But fear not, for there is always hope. In order for God to fill our heart, we must first empty them. We must first empty ourselves. Not halfway, but completely. We must kneel down in the Hamburg surrender acknowledging our doubts and shortcomings and inviting God to work within us. When we approach God with our open hearts, willing to confront our doubts and seek understanding, we create falter a ground for faith to flourish. Just as a garden needs to be clean of garbage and weeds before new seeds can be planted. Our hearts must be empty of doubt to make room for the abandoned grace of God to grow. However, as I mentioned, it is not enough to be half-hearted in our efforts. We must be fully committed to emptying our hearts of doubt, surrounding ourselves entirely to God's will, just as a vessel must be completely empty before it can be filled, our hearts must be emptied of doubt to be filled the, with the overwhelming love and presence of God in our life. Where there is doubt in our heart, we need to understand we've reached our turning point. Let us consider the turning point Throughout scriptures, the disciples faced theirs in the consequence of Jesus' resurrection. If they had to resurrender, if they have re surrendered to doubt and given up, we may never have received the good news. Likewise, St. Paul encountered his turning point when he fell from the horse. Had he not surrendered to God's will and continues to run the race, Christianity may not have spread to the regions he have evangelized. As I'm sure many of us, and including my, that has been marked by struggles and turning point, you can name it all, financially, spiritually, 
spiritually, physically illness, emotionally trauma, name it all, I've been through. And most of you who are sitting here, we have been going through more than me. Yet, through the power of grace, we have preserved. I recall a time when I laid in a hospital bed with a doctor giving up hope and told my parents I would not survive and we died. Also in Burma, where medical care required upfront payment before the doctor even come and see you, our lack of worth seems unbeatable to that cost of medical payment. But through prayer and fasting, we found strength in our weakness and miracle happened. Without miracle, I would not be here alive in a living world and able to serve God through you and those who I encounter in my life. My family haven't given up, but put their trust and faith in God who can do all things and nothing is impossible. By faith in Jesus' name, I was made strong. By faith in his name, he has given me perfect health in the presence of all of you. When we reach our turning point, we must not give up, but kneel down, pray and fast. We must embrace our vulnerability and trust in God's strength alone. Just as Esther and his people fast for deliverance, we too must seek God in our hour of need. And by faith, praying and fasting alone, God can work within us and show us miracles. So my dear families in Christ, let us approach God with humility and honesty, lying our doubts before him on the foot of the cross and trusting in his infinite wisdom and mercy. As we do so, may our hearts be transformed into fertile soil, ready to receive the seeds of faith and grow into steadfast believers, empowered to share the good news with all the world. If doubt clouds our, our vision and we stand at the turning point. Do not despair. Surrender to God, emptying ourselves completely and allow his power to guide us. Through prayers and fasting, we may experience the transformative presence of God and find the strength to run the race before that has set before us. Let us pray together for the encounter to comfort our doubts, the humility to surrender to God's will, and the perseverance to run the race with unwavering faith. The Lord be with you. Let us together affirm the faith of the church. We believe in one God.
Let us pray for the world and for the church. Live in Christ Jesus, sacrifice and reason. Be gracious and answer when we call on you. Hear the prayers we bring for your people. You came to bring a better life to your people. Hear our prayers for the nations of the world. We pray for all countries torn apart by war, and especially we pray for the war between the Israel and Palestine, between the government and the citizens in Burma and any other countries that we may or may not aware. For the communities enriched by poverty and disease. Through your risen power, make us strong to confront injustice that we may be witnesses in the world. Live in Christ in your mercy. You came as the Messiah to save your people from their sins. Hear our praise for the church, its clergy and people. Especially today we remember before you our Archbishop Philip, our regional Bishop Denise, and all the other bishops and clergy and lay people who serve you faithfully. We pray for those who have stayed away from your ways, for the newly baptized and all who turn to you. Through your risen power, call us to repentance and wipe out our sin, that we may be your witnesses in the world live in Christ, in your mercy. You made your home with the despairs and the outcasts. Hear our praise for the community which we live. We pray for all who are forgotten, ignored, neglected, and unheard. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and ourselves, through your risen power, teach us to live in love for one another, that we may be your witnesses in the world. Live in Christ, in your mercy. We came bringing healings and wholeness to your people. Hear our prayer for all who are in need. We pray for those who are lonely or unhappy, those in grief or despair, for those in pain or sickness, for the dying and all who care for them. And especially, Lord, we pray for those who are in our Prayer list. And for those who have no one to pray for. Through your risen power, taught our hearts to respond to the needs of your wounded ones, that we may be your witnesses in the world. Live in Christ in your mercy. You suffered death and rose again to bring new life. To all your people, we remember you are faithful servants of every age. Today, we especially remember before you those to whom an the death anniversary occurred and those who passed recently. We give thanks for your disciples of every generation, for all whose lives has borne witness to your risen power. Feed us like them to be your witnesses to the world and bring us with all the saints 
into the joy of your eternal presence. Live in Christ in your mercy. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive through Jesus Christ. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Our offer tree hymn is number 80. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share, accept and use our offering of your glory for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honor be yours always and everywhere. Mighty creator, ever living God, we give you thanks and praise for your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. And now we give you thanks that you raised him to life triumph and exhorted him in glory by his victory over death. The reigns of sins is ended. A new day has dawned. A broken world is restored. And we are made whole once more. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we pray, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. We pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again given you thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your sons, and bring us to with all your people in the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never and in praise. <laughs> As our Saviour Jesus Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven.
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. The gift of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in remembrance that he died for us. Feed on him in our faith, by faith with thanksgiving. Do 
Let us pray. Most gracious Lord of life, we thank you that you nourish us in these Easter mysteries. Fill us with the spirit of love and unite us in faith that we may witness in the resurrection and show your glory to the world. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. If you didn't come last week, there is um, one role that we are looking for is the um, safety officer for the St. Paul SQ in the back in page number nine. So please do read about it and um, pray about it, discern about it. And if you think that God has called you to serve your brothers and sisters at St. Paul in these areas, please do make yourself known, whether to me or David Ware, and if you want to know more about it, including the roles and all that sort of things, please do contact um, David. And also, um, today we have the pub lunch, so after morning tea, please do head it off to the pub. We can more have more chat on there with the fellowship of our brothers and sisters, and also, um, there is in the pew sheet, there is um, the exchange program that I will be doing. So I will be on a holiday from the beginning of um, 9th of May till the 8th of June, and then from the 10th of June till the 9th of July, um, I will be away in the UK. While I'm away, um, Tracy, Mother Tracy from um, the UK, she will be here to um, lead St. Paul's and also be part of the mission to seafarers. Um, so I would really encourage you all to pray, do pray for us in this exchange program so that God will be bless us in this program so that we can learn from each other through, um, through our parishioners and also to be bringing back to our own parish to nourish um, the spirit and the um, faith of our church. If you have any questions or want to talk more, you may come and talk to me about that one. Do we have any other notices? If it's not, morning, pre morning tea is due or waiting for us, so let us sing our final hymn, which is 276. With our final hymn, we will only be singing four verses. That's me, that which are verse one, six, seven, and eight.
Pays, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do your will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.